Hey everyone, this is a quick start tutorial for Octane plugin for 3ds Max. We're going to start with registering an Otoy account, then downloading and installing the plugin. After that, we're going to set Octane as the render engine used by 3ds Max. Then we'll finish by applying an Octane universal material to a sphere. So the first thing you want to do is register an Otoy account. And what you want to do is go to their website on top, which is home.otoy.com, and click the sign in button. It's going to say sign in, but uh, you can also register a new account here too. As soon as you sign in, it should take you to your profile page here. I'm going to block out my address. And from there, you can go to download. And here you can select the software you want. And depending on the version you want, if you have enterprise or the studio version or even the trial, it's going to show up differently. But you just have to select the version you've got, uh, select the operating system, and then select which version you want. As you can see, we can go all the way pretty far back to a very old version. Or we can use the latest one that's stable. And we're probably going to just stick with the stable release. And click download. Go through the agreement. Click I accept and download. We're now going to launch the Octane plugin executable. You might be getting a black screen right now, but all it is is uh, Windows asking for permission to modify or change settings on this computer. And since we're installing the Octane plugin, we're going to say yes to that. Okay. Click next. Agree to the terms of service and click install. We're going to select the version of 3DS Max that we have on this computer. I have both 2021 and 2022 on this computer. Continue with install. Now, keep in mind that we want to install this on the fastest drive on this computer. And in this case, I had it on my C drive. My C drive is actually a solid state drive, which allows it to load and read files quicker. And since uh, Octane is going to be creating a cache drive, or a, I should say a cache uh, directory where it's going to store all the textures and geometry, you want that to be your fastest drive possible. Otherwise, it will actually slow down render time. Click Finish. And now we go to 3ds Max. If this is your first time using Octane, keep in mind you need to sign in before you can use any of the Octane tools. So if I click on Octane up here, you'll see a login form. Just type in your username and password and log in and you can start using Octane. The default render engine is using Arnold and we want to switch back to Octane. There's two ways to do that. And the one is to go to render setup. And for renderer, instead of Arnold, we're going to switch that over to Octane. And once you do that, you can see all of the, um, the panels here have switched over to uh, the settings that's proper for Octane. The other way is to go to Octane and go to Set Octane as Renderer. Of course, I already switched it, so that is now grayed out. But if I were to switch it back to Arnold, close it. Now we have that as an available option. So we can just click that, and it's automatically switched over to Octane. Now to render anything, we're just going to drop in a sphere. And oh yeah, by the way, by the way, one of the ways to find out or to visually have some kind of indication that it's using the Octane render is that it changes the background to a, I believe a 70% gray value. And we can look at that when we open the environment panel. And you see that the color here is around, I guess 70%. Click OK. And now to render something, we have to open up the Octane render viewport. And we can do this right here, Octane Viewport. And let me put this to the side here. So now with the viewport selected, you can just kind of move around, start rotating things. It's using a purple color for display, but there's no universal material applied to it. To do that, we have to hit the material 
uh, we have to open the material editor and we can now scroll down and it should be under materials we have to open up the octanes panel and what we're going to start with is the universal material now you can build a lot of other material using the other material options but universal material is starting to become the standard because it's based off the PBR um, shading model and PBR material is basically using albedo, metallic, roughness, and normal maps and that should help define the, the look and the feel of the uh, surface so in order to apply it we're just going to drag and drop it onto that surface and from here you can change the material surface and settings let's see here So in this case, I want to change it to a specific color. Let's make it red. And I want it to be metallic. So I'm going to increase the metallic value to one. We're going to use a newer BSDF model and I'm going to go with GGX. And as you can see, we have it all set up now. Of course, the reflection is reflecting just a gray value all across the entire environment. So what we want to do is change it so that we can get nicer reflection highlights. So one of the best ways to do that is to apply an HDRI map. And to do that, let's go to the environment panel. And let's pick an environment map. Now, in order to load textures into Octane, you're gonna have to go to the, um, let me see. We have to go to Maps, Octane, and we're gonna go to the Images, and we're gonna select RGB Image. Drag and drop that. And you can use this also to feed it into the Albedo, Metallic, Roughness, Normal, or any of, any of these uh, other input channels. Um, for the environment though we're just going to select an hdr map and then apply it here by dragging and drop it dropping it into the environment map and yes we want an instance of that and right now there's nothing fed into it so it's completely black but let's go to a let's go find an hdr a nice hdr map so hdr let's see uh, yeah, let's go with this. Okay, now our metallic reflection looks correct. Uh, one thing to note is that the HDRI actually looks a bit dark, and that's because it's in the wrong color space. By default, it sets the gamma to 2.2, but for an HDR, um, we have to use a gamma 1 to show it properly. Okay, now it looks right. And that's about it. And that's the quick start tutorial. Thank you.